present internet has some flaws only few company gained way too centralized fang facebook amazon you know netflix google uh these were the companies microsoft these were the companies who actually gained uh you know and privacy was a major concern and ownership you know users was not owner as as i told you that right so what is basically the difference between web 1 web 2 web 3 people who were born in 1980s like i am a 1980s born they'll get to relate a little more where we have we had seen that internet uh, that that box of uh, that computer that pc that had a box and a cpu and then you had a you know whole lot of floppy disk device and all that so during that time those 1990 internet was you know a simple interface where uh, internet was very slow very few options and this page used to download and the only thing you can do was to read that page and generally most of the pages were photocopy of the magazines there was not enough that you could do about it the only thing you could do was any e- you can send an email that too with very less uh, you know apply very less less features and the internet was very slow very few options and the only thing that you could do with the internet was to read and then came revolution in 2005 as the language got improved all these now you could interact with the internet you could write blogs you can like you could comment you can write your own blog uh, you can actually you know connect with the internet and that is the internet that we were using till that even today we are using web 2 so in web 2 you could actually write and you could actually read as well right read and write those two features in web 3 you could basically you can basically read also you can write also in web3 you can own uh, you know internet as well now when you when when i say own the internet you can own a piece of the internet small piece of the internet that's a, that's the beauty of uh, web3 and not just the own you can own the piece of an inter- internet you can actually own your data so what happens uh, you know if you see who controls the data right in web 1 you access your data on a server the server controls it it is simple in web 1 you didn't own anything in web 2 on social network you access your data on the server right the server at the intermediary can control it right in web 3 the user controls that data and assets and the data may continue to live on other servers in, despite the fact that the data might live on the other servers you still own your assets and your data because you have the private key now what is that private key basically uh, you can is you can understand in a way that if you want to access a gmail you need a password so to access that internet you know you need to have a private key with you if you have the private keys with you you control your data you own your data right and that will come to later uh, so in web 2 and web 1 the biggest challenge was that you could write you can re- in web 2 you could write uh, and you can read but you you could not own anything in web 3 you can actually own your data and web 3 is growing fast uh, the biggest uh, projection is that the city bank projects it to be 13 trillion by 2030 and goldman sachs Uh, uh expecting it to be 8 trillion us dollar already 33 billion was invested by vcs in 2021 and the decentralized finance which is at present is 50 billion at one point of time it was 250 billion us dollar right players they kept evolving from web 1 to web 2 to web 3 you can see the players a uh, few players migrated to this and uh, most of them vanished and after this from web 2 to web 3 i don't know how many will be able to migrate it uh, so i'm not saying that if web 3 will come to web 2 will go away fade away i think web 3 uh, slowly and steadily web 3 will be more dominant and in web 2 you will see many companies will migrate to web 3 or they'll try to embrace web 3 many will who will not change with time will vanish and most like facebook for example knows it that web3 is the future that's why it changed its name to meta most of the uh, web2 applications are today allowing uh, nfts they are allowing profile pictures to be changed as nfts very they are they are verifying the nfts they are in talks with all the major blockchains public blockchains where they are trying to build something or the other or they are trying to enter into the metaverses right so you can actually feel that that every major organization right now 
uh, is FOMOing into Web3, where they are saying, okay, this is the next phase of internet that is about to come. Let's be prepared and let's get into it, right? And this is our data control. And now you can very well relate to this. Now, Web1 was like this. You could only do it through email and password. In Web2, our logins were driven by these three, four major platforms, where if you have uh, an account with Facebook or Google or LinkedIn, you could you can actually access those applications through them. But once you did, once you accessed an application with Facebook, the application automatically got everything you had on Facebook. Your All your private information is now with that application. So this was the kind of interface in Web2 that we currently use. And this is going to be the future where when you want to use an application, it will only ask for your wallets, which is like connect. So MetaMask wallet is like a gateway. So if every individual will have a MetaMask wallet, a wallet is something that, you know, if you want to uh, board a train, if you want to board Shadabdi Express or if you want to board a flight to Mumbai, you have to go to the airport. Without an airport, how will you access to that flight? So to access internet, you will have your own wallets and these wallets are permissionless, right? You don't, they don't belong to one company. It's permissionless. You just need to download it on your PC or on your mobile and you can easily you don't have to give your email id name age sex uh, you know date of birth anything like that you just need to store your private keys use and you just need to download it and there you are you can access the entire web3 applications just by having this wallet right this wallet is basically your identity in web3 like in web2 your Facebook profile, your Google profile, your LinkedIn profile was your identity to access web2 in Web3, your crypto wallets, your non-custodial crypto wallets like MetaMask are going to be the gateway to the internet, right? And basically, Web3 is powered by crypto technology. So when I say Web3, Web3 is a philosophy. It's a decentralized web. It is powered by crypto technology. Wallets is an integral part of crypto technology because if you don't have wallets, you won't be able to access uh, you know, Web3 tokens. Tokens are digital tokens. That is, you know, digital assets on the on the uh, uh, blockchain, right? So, uh, so tokens are the mechanism. The tokens are the incentive to run that application or blockchain. So, suppose uh, on Bitcoin, you had Bitcoin as a token. On Ethereum, you know, you need Ethereum uh, to to use Ethereum network. You know, Ethereum is used as the gas to run applications on ethereum network so to use say uniswap uniswap is a decentralized a crypto exchange to use uniswap you need uni token right to use sandbox it's a it's an uh, it's a metaverse so to use something in metaverse you need that particular token so tokens are basically incentivization for the users for the public who are managing that decentralized application now when i say decentralized applications basically the people are running that show together that is important smart contract without smart contract you can't write uh, you know applications so smart contracts uh, you know are basically now why smart contracts and blockchains are integral is that once we came to know that ledgers are immutable you can write these programs in those uh, you know, in those ledgers. So these these codes they get stored in the block, and we all know we we have learned it that blockchains blocks are immutable. You can't change blocks. So once you can't change blocks, nobody can just tomorrow go and censor these applications. Nobody can change these applications, right? Got it. So this is the beauty of blockchain. Once you know that your blockchain is immutable, your blocks are immutable. Now you can store your software codes in that and you can run applications and nobody will be able to change those uh, those code written on the blockchain. And you need a blockchain network without blockchain network. Web3 is not possible. So wallets, tokens, smart contracts, blockchain network without these four things you cannot run a Web3 application. And the concept of Web3 is basically everybody should be should be uh, should be uh, not just be a user, but a owner. Second is programmability that every token 
should be programmable right every asset on the blockchain you can write codes and you can change uh, you know the character of that code right you can program you can add a new feature to it right so every asset on the blockchain is programmable composability this is the beauty of web3 composability the innovation has to happen once so suppose if i innovate some application tomorrow imran says okay kashif has done this now kashif code is on the blockchain which is open open to anybody anybody can just go and read the code that what was the code that was written to make that application to make facebook now if if imran wants to uh, build something over, on top of facebook so imran just have to copy my code and build something over that that thing so composability is that i said okay fine i have a bullock card you said you have a bullock card okay let let us let us do a let, let me open a milk bar over your bullet card bull card right so so that is how the composability is that you innovate something i'll come and join you and i'll build something over on top of you because your product is open to everybody like when facebook created something or when some other application created something that was created closed door they didn't shared anything the first thing that comes to their mind is to get a patent in web3 everything is, is open everything is open all the innovations are open bitcoin code is open that is the reason today we have reached to this level right and decentralization is the core of web3 use case of web3 stable coins defi nfts dao and metaverse i will not discuss about stable coins defi dao today because of shortage of time but i will talk about two things most important things and most relevant things for your industry